Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you're watching. I've got a treat for you all today. We're joined by a special guest, live from Essex. It's Mickey Theo. How are you doing, Mickey? Yeah, all good. Thank you, Porky. Thanks for having me on your channel. It was nice to get on here. Uh, I, I like the way you talk from the heart, not the arse. Yeah, um, that's very well, good. Mate. Yeah. There's not many people that talk from the heart, you know, they will talk out of their backside, basically. Yeah. Um, and, you you know, I quite like the way you're straightforward with people and that's the way it be. Same as me. Yeah. They're both Libras, aren't we, Mick? That's the one. <laughs> Are you keeping anyway? Yeah, I'm good, mate. You've been All good. today? Yeah, I've done a bit of training. You train um, every day, Mick? Do you know what? Yeah, I, I train most days. It's just, I've always done it. Uh, it's part of me. Um, it's what I do. Um, if I don't train, I don't feel good. You know, even if, on my day off, I just feel a bit lousy as the body, body's repairing. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Um, yeah, I feel good. Yeah, the other day I had to do it. I'd done a bit of training in the morning. I had a cartload of heavy stuff around. And you know what? I took two days off because my body just... You speak, you know, you listen to your body, what your body tells you, basically. Yeah. How much do you weigh, Mick? Uh, I'm 19 stone now. No, <laughs> you don't look it. <laughs> no. Um, oh, do I have to tell you my weight in that? Oh, okay. Well, you, you That's look, a bit you look... of a secret. My weight's a bit of a secret. Is it? Yeah. We don't want to tell too many people my proper weight. All right, then, mate. Uh, you've come into public domain now, and you've you've got a bit of... I'm not sure if it's notoriety or infamous. I don't know, but... You mm. sort of took social media in the in the combat sport world, boxing and MMA and all that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, I storm it last six months because John Fury, I believe, called any man out over fifty, and you accepted the challenge. Um, John has been calling people out. Um, I believe um, I didn't know this till when he called out Dana White. Yeah, and okay. then. I thought, I thought to myself, hang about, he's two years younger than me. I'm older than him, I know I'm fitter than him. You know what? I, f I fancy challenging the guy, you know, a straightforward challenge. Yeah. And that's how it all started, basically. Um, I challenged him. Um, he went off running the raging first. Um, and that, you know, you know, you've seen the videos probably. Um, and then basically, I think through his manager, who rang me um, one night and said to me, you know, you can, we'll have a fight, but John will only fight if there's money on the table. I said, no problem. I says, however you want it. I says, you know. So uh, I actually bumped into Spencer years ago, but uh, I know of him, but that's yeah. it. Um, but yeah. Uh, and did you agree a, a date and venue with him and Spencer and John? Yes, we did. What 28th of May. Posters made, made up or something like that. Yeah, when posters made up, 28th of May uh, this year gone. Um, it was actually going to be uh, in a secret location. Arena, or well, sort of not arena, so a secret location basically uh, with, a, with a ring in it, uh, which would allow us to have referees, cornermen, judges, and uh, and whatever we needed at the time of the pandemic um, to get around it. Um, and I believe we, we were the first ones to sanction something like that uh, off the top of my head. Uh, then even calling out someone, you know, as soon as I call John out, everyone's coming out to play, you know, Mike Tyson, Evan Holyfield, uh, all the names started springing up uh, uh, I've seen on the internet um you didn't you didn't hear them before you know and it was all about charity events and and what so you know but yeah it was a challenge basically um for someone who rates himself uh, very highly in this uh, world um he's the best you know as he put it I, I don't know who I'm messing with um make myself aware and things like that which was um yeah Listen, he's a big man, you know, he's a, he's a big man, uh, whatever he is, he is. Uh, and, I, and I challenged him, um, probably no, no way the weight he is, but I don't care. I know what I can do at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. It's all about heart. Yeah, uh, looking at John's record, uh, it's, not yeah. that, it's not that scary, is it? His professional fighting record. To, to be honest, yeah. Uh, what sort of record? <laughs> yeah, a record. turntable record yeah, I don't yeah. care what the record is excuse yeah. me I'm just going to open this door a bit it's getting a bit warm in here <laughs> sorry about that Paul no problem you've got the, 
underfloor heating on and like it's a roast in there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, it's John's record. Um, to, to be honest with you, if someone went through with me um, after, I don't know, about a month or so after, and no, it didn't look too healthy, to be honest with you. Um, it, you know, I thought it would be a lot better. Um, I found out it was an ex-pro boxer. Um, yeah, he's been there, seen it, done it, I believe. And, you know, his son's doing well, very well at the time. Um, and he's at the top of the, the top of the pops at the moment in the boxing league, yeah. the heavyweight anyway. So I take my hat to Tyson, uh, young Tyson. Yeah, he's great. Uh, done very well for himself. He used to, I mean, he actually came down to one of our gyms, uh, Club KO, um, in Walthamstow years ago. Um, and he sparred, we got him some sparring with Mark Potter as he was coming up through the ranks. Uh, Mark weren't a bad boxer at the time. We turned him pro back in the day. A good friend of mine is still Mark. We still see each other every now and then. Yeah, but Tyson actually come down to the gym and they had a good little tear up. We still got a picture. You know what? I'll dig the picture out. It's still in the gym. And uh, next time we have a little chip, I'll send it over to you. You can get oh, it on. Yeah. It was it was good to see Tyson and Mark get it on, you know, uh, at how they did back in the day. And yeah. to what he's become now, which is lovely, you know. He's done he's done amazing. Um, so. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, is it true you've got a picture of the, the the venue and the date on your fridge, Mike? I've always had it there since day one. Is it a good is it a good poster? Um, it's over there. I'll bring you bring it a bit closer so you can see it. There it is. Mick and John getting it on. He's still there. So when I go to the fridge, I, I, I see him. He's he's in my face every day. So you know. Yeah. You I like him in my face every day, so, so I know what I'm up against, you know. You're taking it pretty serious, this training, then, for John, aren't you? Definitely. I've always, listen, I've always trained. Yeah. Taking it serious, I don't know if that's the word to say. Yeah, but my head, my mind's on him. Um, I see him every day. Um, yeah, I'm up for it. Um, like I said, I've challenged him. I'm the one that's moving forward on this, so I'm the one that's got to get on and do it, you know? Yeah. So that's the way it's going to become. A lot. Uh, John's called a lot of people out though lately, hasn't he? Mike Tyson, as you said, Dana White, Lennox, Evander Holyfield, Bellew, Charlie Martin, David A. Wilder, yeah. David A. The, the list it, it just goes on and on, doesn't it? It does. Well, it tells you what type of person he is, isn't it? Do you think it, John well, doing it for I mean, attention? I don't know what he's doing it for. He's doing it for something. Obviously, he thinks he's bigger, stronger than what his mind is telling him. Um, I, I don't know what's going through his mind when he says when he calls people out. Yeah. But um, what would happen if one of them guys did step up to the challenge, like Lennox Lewis, for instance, or David Hay? Let's put David Hay to one side. Lennox Lewis, what would he do? He'd, he'd annihilate him. You know, yeah. he'd make him look silly. He'd shut him up, put him back in his cradle, wouldn't he? So do you think it's just for column inches and views and to get himself out there, project himself into the public domain? 100%. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you, how, how close is this fight to coming off? Because John called you out one weekend and said he wanted you up the next morning up in, in a gym in Manchester or something. And what, why didn't that happen? I'll tell you what happened because he's got seminars booked with um, with Spencer, so I believe. And he didn't want to look a right dick at the end of the day, did he? Because um, the questions will be, why didn't you fight Mickey Theo? Now he can say, what, called him up? Look, he didn't turn up. I was here in the morning. Yeah. You know, he's trying to be smart. And I said, he's only just putting wool over people's eyes, you know. Um, but listen, there's a load, load of arse knickers out there. There's people that want to go and see John Fury because he's the man up there, yeah? Um, half of them don't even know him, don't know, don't know what he's about. Like, you've done some research on him. He hasn't had a... He, he ain't fought no one, as you, as, as you believe and I believe. Um, but, um, like I say, he called me up. Uh, well, listen, I reverted back to where were you on the 28th? That's why I called him a chicken and a weasel. Uh, Spencer or weasel. Um, then coming back to me, you know, because they didn't want to fight, I believe. Why, so, yeah, it didn't, it, why didn't that happen on 28th? Was it because of pandemic, do you think? You better ring him up and speak to him, ask him himself. Yeah. <laughs> and no, that's his whole idea. It was in pandemic. We, we, we were only going to have the corner people, so two corner people, judges, and there weren't going to be no crowd there. It was going to be pay per view. We had a um, 
a, a streaming company involved and we had a film production company involved, yeah? yeah. Um, which were going to make the crowd up and all that. Nowadays, like Eddie Hearn, he does a bit of crowd in the background. We was actually going to have characters around the ring, which is, you know, it was done on the Rise of the Foot Soldier 4. Yeah. Because Don King was sitting there as well on, on that, believe it or not. So the same crew was going to do that. So we had it all set up lovely. And I've never, never done such a put an event together. Um, so, yeah, I was digging in my heels to get this done. And obviously, no one come back to me. Obviously, they didn't want it. They shit themselves, I believe. Yeah, is that a good word? Yeah, well... Good, good word? Yeah, well, sounds like a good word, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I saw the call-out that John did. He was in the gym and he, and he said, look, be up here tomorrow at 7am and just turn up. Turn up, he was saying. And, and I thought, well, that won't give you much time, were it, to get up there and things like that. Listen, I've seen some of the, the, the travelling boys fighting on and calling each other out, yeah? Mm -hmm. They never go to their own back gardens or someone else's back garden. That's never heard of. They don't do it. They go in a mutual place and meet, yeah? Two from one camp, two from another camp, yeah? They never go to Frank's back garden or John's back garden, do they? Yeah. Not, it's not, that's not a not thing done. I know David Campbell went to his back garden, yeah, and he didn't come out of his camper. I know that for a fact. It's on my phone from a good source that grew up with him many years ago. So don't be telling lies, John. Do you think if this pandemic's going to be another 12 months that it won't happen in the next 12 months, Mick? It's got no, this has got nothing to do with pandemic. We can get it on in the pandemic, which would be more exciting, yeah? Mm. This is what we were going to do last time in the lockdown. We had it sanctioned for the 20, 28th of May um, in the pandemic, in the lockdown. Um, and everyone's at home. They're going to want, want to watch it anyway, I believe. Yeah, they can watch it. They don't have to watch it, but we'll, we'll give them the option. Yeah. Is there any, has there been any talk about how much the pay per view will be, Mick? Um, I don't think we're going to go too hot on the pay per view. I think, you know, I don't know. No idea at the moment. Around about ten pounds, nine ninety five or something, nine ninety nine, something uh, reasonable. So per, if, per... you think it'd do a million buys, Mike? Well, judging on what it's had on views in the last, what was it? It's got to be six months, isn't it? Yeah. It's done very well for itself on views and interests. Um, we're just going off the interest it's had on it, which I listen. I never thought it'd, go, it'd come to this. Mm. You know, it's it's, it's now becoming. A big thing in in yeah. the boxing industry. I think a lot of people want to see it. Yeah, um, I want to see I, it. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, obviously, on John's side, want to see it, yeah. um, and a, a lot of mine. You know, there's people that's getting in contact with me for for few years. I haven't seen or spoke to them. You know, and uh, they can't wait to see it. Um, and I promised them one thing: I'm going to knock him out, and that's it. Yeah. You know, that's how positive I am. I I, listen, I never, I never spoke like this before. Okay. Because um, I'm not a type of person, yeah? yeah? But I'm telling you now, I will knock him out. And that's it. I, I'm just, you know, I can't wait to get in that ring with him. Um, as he said, he blew the wolf. He blew the wolf's back or something. I can't remember the words he used. Um, do you remember the words he used in the last video? Yeah, some, uh, you the, the big wolf up or something, the big bad wolf. Yeah, something like the big bad wolf blew my... Uh, uffed and puffed and blew house down. Blew, that, blew me house down. Well, let me, John, if you listen to this, you will listen to this. You ain't blowing no one's ass, mate. Yeah, you're just trying to get out of things. Like I said, 28th of last of this year, you bottled it, mate. Okay, but listen, I am at the moment. I will get a date on. I'm just waiting for my people to come back, the business people. I will get a date. You will get the date handed, and this fight is going to happen. Yeah, and I'll make sure of that. Okay, so you'll be hearing from me very soon with a date. The, is it? Will it be all contracts signed and all that kind of thing? Listen, it's all going to be done properly. We're not professional, but it's going to be done 100% correctly, properly, and uh, you know, with lawyers. So, um, I did believe my my lawyer did try and ring um, Spencer up or email Spencer or leave a message on his whatever voicemail. He never come back to him. Yeah. So, this is after there was messing about. They want to come back to us. It went a bit cold. So, you know. I said to him, look, here's Spencer's details. Get in touch with him. And Spencer knows that we've been trying to contact him through lawyers now. You know, this is not through Fred, Tom, Dick and Harry. This is through a proper lawyer. Yeah. Top lawyer that uh, deals with Has things Has John like gone that. silent? 
Well, I haven't heard of John since well, from, since his last Bad Wolf, whatever, blew my blew my house down. Is it the bad, big Bad Wolf that blew, blew Little Red Riding Hood's house down? Or something like that. Something <laughs> like that. But you know what? <laughs> when I get in that ring with you, mate, I'll be blowing you down. Don't worry about that. Yeah. To, 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 so you eat them words what you said last time. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because everybody wants to see it. And uh, I'd assume that Spencer Brown, John's agent, manager, advisor, consultant, whatever he is, he, he's a smart enough businessman to know that it generates a few quid. And the problem is just getting you both into the ring and everybody's putting their egos to one side. You know what I mean? Listen, that's all it is. It's a challenge at the end of the day. And uh, it's not about egos. It's about a challenge. Two men get in the ring, challenge each other. But, I mean, what sort of manager is Spencer if he can't come back to a professional lawyer about this fight? Yeah. A professional manager who's acting for his um, uh, so-called boxer um, or client. What sort of manager is Spencer not to come back or send a text at least I have to speak to him. Send the text saying, um, John doesn't want to fight this guy for certain reasons. Finished. Yeah. You know, there's, there's silence on their end, you know. But um, listen, the crowd want to see the fight. I want to see the fight and do the fight. So it's going to happen. I'm going to get a date. I'm not going to just put it on John like, see you next week. He will have six to eight weeks to train to get it right. I'll give him that option. And we'll have a date. We'll sign it. All he's got to say is accept the fight. Okay. Everyone's going to know where the fight's going to be on pay per view. Yeah. Done. We promote it, and it's going. It's going, listen. It will go ahead and be a great, a great thing to watch. Let's get this fight, John. Let's get this fight happening and get it out of our way in life. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, I don't have a problem with you. You don't have a problem with it. Let's just get the fight on. Please the fans. Whoever's the winner, you might be me, John. You know, I don't know. You know, let's get in the ring. Let's do it. Let's get the gloves on properly. Queensbury rules. And let's do it, mate. Let's get this part of our life out of the way, you know? So this is the chapter we we, we went through in this year and, and the era, and we've done it, you know? And, and great, good luck to whoever the winner is at the end of the day, you know? And is there going to be something going to charity, Mick? Yeah, we, we, like I said, we, we're doing it for the NHS. But listen, boxers get a little bit out of it. They don't do it for nothing. Like I say, no one's going to get in a ring, and you know, uh, for nothing at the end of the day. Yeah. People can oh, listen, the public can say what they want at the end of the day, but listen, let them get in a ring for nothing. No, they don't want to, you know? Yeah. You always hear about a talk about like Mike Tyson back in the day. I'll get in a ring for X amount of money. Yeah. It's all about well, why they don't want to get a ring. They're only getting a ring for money. Yeah. Boxers will not fight unless there's money on the table today. Yeah. And do you it's feel, all about money? Do you Sorry? think Mick, that uh a stumbling block could be the John's shouted and bawled that much on social media about tearing you from limb from limb and all that and, <laughs> and all, all you sound that. like him hey do i sound like him? yeah I, i've been practicing sound great thank you for good impression. do you think he's shouted off that much now that he could be oh god what if i have to fight and what if i lose do you think the reputation could be shredded to bits if he did fight you and lose. Do you think he's got more to lose than you because of how he's conducting himself? Listen, at the end of the day, like I say, he's a pro, an ex-pro. I'm a nobody. Yeah, I don't even have a white collar on. <laughs> um, and the way he's going on, you know, he's the best, he's this, he's that on his first video, yeah? Make yourself known. I'm around all the Frank Warren shows, you know, licking ass and all that bollocks, yeah? Um, so, yeah. You know, I ain't going nowhere. I'm, I'm, I'm getting this fight on, and he will get a date soon. And this will be done properly. Not see you Sunday, because I've got, I've got interviews the next week after I don't look at cunt at the end of the day. Because that's what he was going to do, look at cunt. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know what why or what people see in this guy. Uh, they want to go and see him, you know what I mean? But anyway, this this is horses for courses at the end of the day, you know? And, and John's one of them, you know? What if... Uh... Like, the, what if the fight didn't happen and you two were to meet, at, say, a boxing show? Because John says he's all around London at Frank Warren shows all the time, and I know you are as well. What if you were to both meet in an arena and he, you were on your, you were with your mates, he were with his mates? Would it go off? Listen, I'm not that type of guy. At the end of the day, 
Um, I'm not one for just going out. Look, we can we can all go out, walk up outside our, our house and have a row straight away. We can cause anything if we want to. But you know, I'm not that type of guy, you know. Listen, it's all about controlling yourself, you know. Yeah. A professional guy, when I say professional, I mean, I've been doing doors for many, many, many years. Uh, that was my job, you know. Um, now, if you're in that game and you've done it for many years, you, 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 you conduct yourself in the right manner, yeah. You know how to conduct yourself. And it's the same being out on the street. Same being at an event, you know, conduct yourself in the right manner, yeah. At the end of the day, someone comes at you and wants to go for you, you got to take care of them, yeah. But you don't start on people for no reason, yeah. Even if the words are thrown, you know, you know, and that's the way it is. So we meet at a boxing event, and what he's going to have his entourage with him, obviously. And if it's going to be an, an, an event where Tyson's fighting, there's going to be a lot of travelling guys there. He's going to feel in his home comfort, isn't he? Yeah. Naturally, yeah. And then people will know who I am, and then they'd want to see it get on there and then, I believe, you know? But um, honestly, I'm not one for going to venues. I'd rather sit at home, at home, my TV, feet up, all that bollocks left behind me, yeah? Mm. I've, I've been, listen, I've been invited to the top shows ringside seats i said you know what i'm not rushing into that arena to rush out before everyone's fucking trampled on you it's bollocks you know it's all right it's all right being there but sometimes you sit there at home you know you see everything you see the rematch you see people coming in the ring um the boxers in the background fighting getting ready warming up you know i like all that you know or you can go to the event uh, like some people rather go to football uh, to hear the crowd and the atmosphere yeah. which grabs them yeah I can I can understand that, and it's probably probably the same in boxing. But me, you know what? Boxing finishes. I won't click on the remote and I go to bed. I ain't got to worry about getting out of the arena. Let's get out before the traffic builds up, and this and that. And by the time you get home, and you know what I mean, mm. it's a long day, a long night. Is it possible, so, mate, that if it didn't happen in a ring, that you could both get at it bare knuckle? Uh, well, John's always reverted to it bare knuckle, yeah. Um, at the end of the day. So I challenge him on the bare knuckle, yeah? Mm. But I, I, I believe, you when you say, would it happen out of the ring? But the only way that's going to happen, if two sides meet up and it don't, goes, yeah? But then that, that's a risky business, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Because my boys are going to come up with me or whatever, my team and his team. And, you know, it's just crazy that. Because yeah. things will get out of hand before we actually... Yeah. Got to fight, I believe. Yeah. Because, yeah, he's going to come down probably mob handed, you know. And then what? I'm going to turn up with a few people as well. So, what is it? Crowd against the crowd. It's not about that. That's why I'm saying let's do it in the ring properly. It's a challenge, man to man. Get the gloves on and let's do it properly. If you want bare knuckles in the ring, I'll do bare knuckles in the ring with a ref properly. In a controlled yeah, not a environment. Not a problem for me. Not a problem. You know? We've had, uh, I've had, I've had offers. People have been in touch with me. Graham Morris, uh, ex-board official, as uh, he refereed refereed the KSI Logan Paul fight uh, on Sky. Graham has uh, no, the first one. I'm not sure if that were on Sky, but anyway, the the first. Uh, sorry, Graham's yeah, offered to YouTube, referee. Buddy. Yeah, yeah, mm. he wants to be neutral. Yeah, Graham Morris, as an ex-board referee, is offered to referee it bare knuckle or Queensby rules. I dare say you've probably got people working on venues, Mickey, and contracts with lawyers and stuff like that, streaming services. So it can be put together, but I think you and John probably need to speak on Zoom as two opponents saying, look, let's get it on and cut the rubbish because there's a lot of chat going on on both sides, but it's the pandemic stopping it, Mick, isn't it? I think. Yeah, but Paulie, will, it, will, will he, if you called him, would he come on with me? I don't he's mind. Well, he's welcome on my channel anytime he wants, John. I'd I mean, love, listen, I would love that if he could come on your channel. And I'll, yeah. can we do three people? We can, can we? Yeah, we can do three people on here if you want. I've got some questions. Hey, John, if you're listening to this, get hold of Paul Key. Let's get on the channel. Let's talk over the air. I'd love to speak to you anyway, John. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. You don't know me. I don't know you. But listen, I've got your number, your personal number. You don't, you don't even answer the call. But anyway, it'd mm. uh, be nice to get you on that. See what you've you got to say about it. Because look, it's two sides to every story. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's nice to get you on and uh, do it professionally yeah. and talk about it and move forward. Yeah. 
I think deep. No, I'm, not, down, I'm not ducky, no one. I'm not yeah, ducky. I'm no, I'm no blowover. Okay, just let you know, I'm not a blowover. Okay, so remember them words. I'm not yeah. a blower, mate. Me, me, I, I me. That, uh, me. I believe John's yeah. pride will get him in the ring because, like I said, he made a lot of noise and said a lot of things. And it's now time to turn up and do battle. It's got to happen. You can't go around shouting and bawling. Oh, this man in 50 odd year old age group. I'm the best, John Fury. Well, well come and prove it. Come and prove it. Because there's come and, prove it. and the smoky bacon walkers, isn't there, Mickey? Yeah, well, I think he's one of them, isn't he? Well, at the moment, see, aren't we? Because there's a lot of talking gone on from John and a lot of threats issued and tearing people from limb from limb, but we're not seeing no fighting. So, John, when you listen to this, get hold of Porky, he, he's, love, he's loving to welcome you on this channel. You're welcome, and John, me, and me as well, John. I'd love to speak to you with Porky, and this, this, you know, this would be great for the crowd what they want to hear. Yeah. We'll get you John know? on here. John would love it get on John. Him. Get him on there and we'll sort it out. We'll have a little chit-chat, see see his views and my views and get them all out. Perfect. I mean, you John know? can go on AFL and Boxing Social and talk about matchups and past fantasy <laughs> matchups and that, but he can't come on Zoom and talk about when this fight's going to happen because it's like this. When will the fight happen? Where? And... Um, Let's get it on because it, it's dragging on a bit now and it, it's becoming like Tyson against Joshua. There's a lot of talk around that. But I don't see any fighting. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's got to happen. It has got maybe, to happen. Maybe he won't come on your channel, Porky. I don't know. Well, he, maybe you might not want to. You might think I'm going to ambush him with questions I've got for him. I don't know. I yeah, wouldn't that'd be, do that. Well, that'd be nice anyway. <laughs> I'm just going to ask him straight. I'd just like to ask him who the guy was that he fought for £100,000 in a bare knuckler. Mm. Because I've been told it didn't happen off a very reliable source. Mm. If it did happen, who was it? When did it happen? Where's the footage? Who saw it? Uh, and where did it happen? At? That's what I want to know. Because it was in the Sun newspaper, so it must be true. Mm. Or is that more shit being put out by John on, on yeah. in the newspapers and on social media to get his profile out of there because I'm seeing a lot of talking and a lot of bollocks. And I'm not yeah. seeing any fighting. There's only one DVD oh. of John having a fight, isn't there? And that's against my friend Malpaz. <clears throat> so why, why aren't we allowed to buy that copy again? That's what I want to know. And like he, said in his, like he said in his first video, you don't know who you're messing with. I'm the best. Well, if you're the best, come out and prove it. Yeah, it's got yeah? to come out. It's got to come Go out. I'm a nobody. Go. I'm not a pro. I'm not an ex-pro. I'm a nobody in your league. So come out and prove it. Yeah? You're getting a little hamster against the fucking giant, yeah? Calling you out, mate. What's the problem? Mm. You know? Yeah, it's not good. And the fact I'm older than you. I'm older than you as well, mate. I'm a fucking... You know, although you look like an old man, I said, you know, but, you know... I'm here, mate. Good I want it. Now, aren't you? I want it. Mm. Yeah. And are so, you, um, how are you doing with your cardiovascular, Mick? Uh, cardiovascular? Yeah, you know, I tick over, you know. You're yeah. not going to gas, are you? Well, I might do with John. You never know. <laughs> he might be too big for me and too strong and uh, you know, overpower me. We'll see. Mm, it's got to happen though, Mick, hasn't it? Listen, he needs to come on your channel, mate, and this yeah. would be great for everyone, you know? Yeah, I think it um, would, yeah. I've never spoke to him, even on the air. Uh, I don't think he wants to talk to me, because he's big, man, John. <laughs> mm. Well, it's been a pleasure, Mick, having you on. Yeah, uh, likewise. Uh, you, you're a straight talker, and I like that. You're my kind of person. Listen, I'll tell you how it goes, the same as you. you. You know, you don't hear many of these people, you know, that's scared to talk. Just talk from the heart and that's it, go. What, you know? what you have in boxing, though, Mick, is a lot of people, they all talk like us, but they don't want to do it in public. They want to do it secretly because they all want to get on Sky and BT and get pay-per-view. So a lot of yeah. people, they don't say anything because it's, it's the livelihoods, isn't it? Whereas me and you, 
we can say what we want because we're not dictated to it by anybody. That's the difference, you see. Exactly. It's like which you were talking about judges the other day, mm. and you know you can't open your mouth when you're in the board, and you know you got to go by what they say. That's all bollocks. Like yeah. your guy was saying the other day, who's not in in that uh, scenario anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Graham Morris. You know, I sort of take my hat off to the guy. He's done well. He, he's done right what he's done, you know. Yeah. And like the judge in the other day, with that, I forgot the judge. Oh, yeah, the O'Connor, that, Ritson, on the phone, on the phone, that's disgusting. Mm. You you know, see, that's someone's argument... yeah, sorry, go on. livelihood. That's yeah. someone's livelihood there, you know. My argument with that, Mickey, is why aren't the police looking at Terry O'Connor's phone to see who texted him? Yeah. Because... And what bet was placed? With a card, yeah, exactly, because with those cards that he handed out, Terry O'Connor, that is criminal. In my opinion, that looks criminal. So why aren't the police now looking into Terry O'Connor's phone? Why not? Because if that had been anybody else and it had been a world title fight or something, the police would be involved now, but it weren't a world title fight. It were a minor belt. But what about the kid Vasquez? He goes to the bottom at Q now. Hmm. And, and it's not the first time it's happened with Terry O'Connor. It happened with Huey Fury against Parker. And it's happened mm. in other fights where the guy has been a complete buffoon. But nobody's allowed to question A-star referees. You, yeah. We all saw Robert Smith the next day come out, didn't we? And just dismiss it as nothing. Oh, yeah. it's social media, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't social media. He's caught on his phone. Yeah. On Sky Sports. And like That's I right. said, why aren't the police looking into it? Why ain't it a criminal investigation? Because money's exchanging hands on that fight. And people yeah, are at stake. And he's on his phone with the judge. And yeah. another one that slipped through the net, the other judge, Michael Alexander, who had it by two rounds to, to uh, Ritson, he's escaped it because he went on his phone. But if you back up the fight before, Thomas is somber. He were robbed Thomas Asombra against Thomas Ward. Terry mm. O'Connor was seven rounds apart from Mike, from Marcus O'Donnell's scorecard in a 10-round fight, but he were nine rounds apart in a 12-round fight on the Ritson one from Marcus O'Donnell's scorecard. Mm. Now, back in the day, if two judges were four rounds apart, you had a, you had a chance to appeal. But we're talking seven rounds and nine rounds in two fights and a both O'Connor cards. But he's swept away mm. under a big carpet. Yeah. What do you think, mate? Yeah, you're right. 100%. It's all wrong. It's all, you know... Uh, you, you never think that would happen in boxing, but it happens. It happens everywhere, you know? Mm. Mm. Uh, especially in horse racing, you know? It's all about money. Bets are going down, you know? It's yeah. big money. If the that happened industry. in horse racing, somebody on the phone would be hell on, wouldn't they? Mm. Yeah. So... All right, then moving on from that, Mick, what do you think about boxing at the moment? Is it turning into like WWE with all these narratives? Um, in, in what respect? Well, we have like, every time there's a show on Matchroom, there tends to be a script wrote, doesn't there, that maybe isn't true. You know, things like that and flipping tables up at press conferences and things like that. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Feel like it's... It's taking it um, off what the actual sport is because there's a lot of fighters nowadays that are getting pay-per-view that shouldn't be. For example, Chisora's got nine losses. Usyk's only had one fight at heavyweight. How's that a pay-per-view headline? Well, he's got to earn his money somewhere, hasn't he, Eddie? I so understand that, but do you feel... That's that, what it's all about. It's about the money, the dollar. Do you feel you that know? the product's watered down, Mickey? 100%. Or what it used to be? Yeah, definitely, you know. You got to be right at the top to fight someone at the top, and obviously, listen. Uh, no, I like Derek. Uh, it. I think it's a good fight, good match. Mm. Um, I believe Derek could take him. Yeah. Um, my money would be on Derek. Uh, I think Usyk is jumping up from cruiserweight to heavyweight, thinking he can dominate that. Which I think is, he's got to take a step back and think about it. I mean, he fought Tony Belly. Tony Belly wasn't even a heavyweight. In my my eyes, anyway, yeah. um, he fought him. I, I suppose when when Tony uh, beat David Hay, he he beat a cripple at the time because David David would pee all over the uh, uh, belly. Um, I quite like David, and uh, I had a thousand pounds on that that to, for, for for Hay to beat him. Anyway, it was a no brainer that fight. But until, you know, listen, unfortunately, you're fighting on 
on one leg, you've got no stability at all. So I'm unlucky for David that day. Then the rematch, even the rematch, if you look at his, his, his Achilles, it, it wasn't right. You know, he's still a bit of a limp, I think. But he wanted the fight so much, David, because of the loss. And he thought he'd go in and take him out. But listen, at the end of the day, Tony Belly done him and uh, he won. So, you know, we, we, we can't sort of put the clock, clocks back on that. But um, it is what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? There's only one champion comes out if, 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 if he knocks him out or gets stopped. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen a few of Eddie's fights recently. I forget the black kid uh, um, who um, AJ's behind. Um, what, see? What? Yeah. That, why did that fight get stopped? The geezer ain't in trouble. Got stopped. That's what got, that's he's calling a he's calling a through the toweling. What's all that about? Mm. I mean, that's that's something going on there. Someone's got paid off something because that wouldn't should never be stopped. Mm. Do you rate Do what, see, Mick? Do I rate him? Who's he fought at the end of the day? Nobody. You know. Exactly. So I rate him. Listen, he, he looks like he's okay. He's up and coming, but how far he can go in that division is another, is another thing. You know, when he fights and beats champions, well, then you, you know you have to rate him, and rate anyone. You know, at the end of the day. Yeah. Does he beat Anthony Yard and Callum Johnson? No way. No way. Yeah, I agree. No, I agree. Way. As well. no way. Well, if he beats them, I'll take my out too. Yeah, you know he's okay. He's up and coming. He's he's getting to so far up the ladder, and I think he's got to start hitting the wall. You know, personally, um, you you're stepping up another league, Yardy. I mean, I love Anthony Yardy. I think he's so confident in the ring, the way he moves about, and uh, yeah, great fighter. Um, unlucky for him fighting the um the champion, the Russian guy before. Um, what was his name? The Russian guy he thought he got beat. By Kovalov, yeah. Uh, unlucky there, but um, I mean, Kovalov, he's at the end of his career as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I think Anthony should, I, I personally thought Anthony was going to win that fight. I wanted him to win anyway. Yeah. But uh, you're lucky to get away with that one, Kovalov, I think. Yeah. Do you feel that uh, Tyson Fury beats Anthony Joshua if they fight next year? All day long. Yeah. I do. He's he's a bigger man. Um, listen, when you're up against taller men, bigger men, it's harder. Um, Anthony hasn't fought bigger, taller men than him. Um, so he's going to be punching up instead of down and across, yeah? Holding your hands up that extra to, to punch higher, because Tyson's a lot taller than him. Um, he's going to have problems, I think. Um, and Anthony's become a hit and run, isn't he? The last few fights. Yeah. Um, when he fought uh, Louise, his last fight, um, it was like hit and run. Didn't want to get a call. Didn't want to get in a, in a, in a battle, which wow. people want to see that, you know? And then he's saying he's learned something in boxing, you know? Hit and run. It's all about box, box and out, in and out, you know? But we want to see tear-ups, don't we? Yeah, of course we do, yeah. <clears throat> Does Wilder fight Tyson Fury again, Mick? I think if Wilder fights him, if he was, I, I think that fight can happen, yeah? yeah. Um, Legally, um, because you know there, there must be something in the contract. It says a rematch, but I don't think you've got a certain time to do it because who knows what's going on. If that fight happens, listen, Wilder, he's a one-punch knockout guy, and that can happen. You know, can happen any time. Um, it's like when uh, Deontay, um, not Deontay, uh, Tyson was trying to get a deal on with Anthony Joshua. Bang about it, you got to fight. Wilder first, Wilder could knock him out. So, you know, it's the same as Dylan White. Dylan White wanted to fight um, Povetkin, yeah? yeah? Thinking he's going to walk through him. Well, he was walking through him. If he jumped on him when he had him down, he would have done him. Yeah. Um, too confident, I think. Um, he should have took him out. And then now uh, he's gone back to the bottom of the ladder. Otherwise, it'd be, a, it'd be a tight fight between him and Tyson Fury, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's all about getting past that opponent to move forward to the next one, I believe. Yeah, well, that's the fact. That's the fact. That at the end of the day, so you know, you you got to get over that hurdle, the first hurdle, before you hit the second bigger hurdle. You know. Yeah. At the end of the day, what do you think to women's boxing at the moment, Mickey? <clears throat> um, yeah, I think it's it's quite enjoyable personally. Um, 
different. And it's, it's amazing when you see women doing what men can do, you know? So I'm not biased against it. I think it's good. Um, it's good. You, I think you see more women in the gym now training and, and getting into boxing, which is good, you know? Mm. Yeah. That's brilliant. All right, then, Mick. Well, thanks for coming on channel, Mick. No problem. It's been brilliant. You're welcome. Uh, it's been nice to have a chat, and we'll we'll do some next week if you want. Yeah, I'm there. Just phone call, mate. All right, it'd be, nice to, it'd be nice to do something with John next week together, wouldn't it? Yeah, hopefully, John. I know you're watching this, John, because you've got a lot of uh, moles out there that tell you everything. Yeah. Pick up the phone, John. You've got my number. I've got your number here as well, but you don't answer your phone. Well, why, why don't you, after this, give him a ring? I'll give him a ring. Shall I give him a give ring? ring? Shall I give him a ring? Shall I give him a ring now? Yeah, do it now online so we know where he's answering. So people can know he's answering. He might, have, yeah, give him a ring. Must turn my phone on. <coughs> we'll, give, we'll give John a ring now and uh, see if he's gonna come on with us. And cool. that'd be great. Everyone might see that. I think that's gonna be top of the pops. You know, people want to see it and uh, let, let's get it on. Top of the pops is that a, a southern thing? Southern slang. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Top of the pops. Listen, top, there was a thing called Top of the Pops years ago. We was kids, you know. And it was at, it had all the latest bands on it, and they called it Top of the Pops. Um, I don't know, it just come out, just come out from nowhere, really. It's not really a southern thing, but uh, yeah, let's get it on. His uh, well, his, his number's not got a WhatsApp number to it. It's just a normal, uh, old school, old school number. Uh, what number? You, what number you got for him? <laughs> What's the ending? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read it on here because it might get me in a lot of trouble. No, just the end numbers. The last two. I'm not going to say it because it, it, it could that could get me a knock at door. It might it might come to the door and tear me apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, someone I, I forget who gave me his number. I tried to ring it a few times. I thought, well, you know what? Just so it's all ended straight away. Yeah. Straight away. So you must have changed his number. Maybe. Uh, never mind. Uh, John, you're welcome on channel anytime. We'll get Mickey on and we'll do a we'll do a trio. I'll fire up questions and I'll be man in middle, piggy in the middle. I'll be piggy in the middle, John. And we can get you both to agree something live where you're both speaking to each other instead of going back and forward. Exactly. And Let's move forward. Moving forward then, John. Maybe we can get a date sorted, a venue, uh, and get some sponsors and well, streaming like and all that kind of thing. Like I say, I'm on it now. I'm, I'm going to ring the guy today, um, the guy who's, who does low-budget films and see how far he's gone. I will be coming back with a date either way. So, um, And he won't be like two days down the road. He'll give six to eight weeks notice, uh, even 12 weeks, see how he can yeah, get on and give give, give uh, time for the old boy to get ready um, and get in shape, you know, because he's looking still, a little, still, still looking flabby uh, with those done some weight. Well, that's a bit low, Mick. A bit low. <laughs> well, he couldn't take his top off, should he? You know, at the end of the day. Has he took his top off lately? He took his top off. Yeah. You're on the ball, you, Mick, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, he took his, did you see him in the video? He took his top off and he went, ah, started growling. <laughs> he did what? He started growling. <laughs> he was doing a back, a back double biceps on the back. What a Tom Platt's. <laughs> Yeah, a back double biceps, and I think his son Tyson was filming him, and uh, then he'd done the most muscular. And what, brutal and he started, fox? He, he got a bit embarrassed and started walking off. Did he do a brutal fox? <laughs> brutal fox? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he did, Mick? Uh, solid. Yeah. You're all ready and re ready to rumble. I'm mate. ready, mate. <clears throat> yeah. Ready when he is. Yeah. Oh dear, I better put the ends away. <laughs> <laughs> all right then. Well, on that note, then, Mick, I think we'll move on. But I've done it because he done it the other day. So uh, yeah. That's probably why he didn't want to fight you because he probably didn't want to get next to you. But he said, "Forget the muscles." You know, I'm not muscular. I'm just tight and toned now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, 
yeah. I thought I'd do that for a laugh anyway. All right then, mate. Well, listen, you take care, mate. All the best and keep in touch. Thank you. Cheers, pal. Cheers, mate. Bye, mate. Mate. Well, that were Mickey Theo. Uh, he's a bit of a character. I quite like Mick. I've got a bit of a soft spot for him. He tells it straight. Uh, over to you, John, now. Pick up the phone. Get in touch. My number's not hard to get, John. Get in touch and let's get you on a Zoom call with Mickey and I'll ask you both questions. Um, we can do it. We can get this fight on and after we can all go for a pint. All right, John, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.